So today we're looking at the Athern Southern Pacific Gunderson Maxi 3 well car. Starting here from the front, we got some stanchions along with a ladder and the 48. This is for the 48 foot container this is supposed to hold, along with some markings for the other sizes like 45 and 40 and even 20. Got Southern Pacific road number as well as plate H along with some other detailing. And then we have the Southern Pacific speed lettering logo, which I like a lot. And the back we got this black triangle. Now for the other side, we got this black box, which I actually seen in a lot of freight cars. And then on this side, for some reason, there's these long segments, while on the other side, there's like these short segments. I'm not sure why they did it like that. So let me know in the comments if you do. So on the end, we have this orange brick wheel, along with this Bachman Easy Mate coupler. As for the top, we have this catwalk that's filled with holes, although they aren't really see-through because they have this panel behind them all. And we also have an air reservoir tank here for the air brakes. Moving along, we got some wedges here just to help get the container in place. And there's actually some detailing inside, surprisingly. I thought it would just be flat, but you can see there are some notches in there as well as the holes to put in the pegs for the containers. On the other end, we have this peg. Now this is just to fit in with the other well cars in this set. And there's also this blank space there now if you guys want to see an overview shot here you go as well as the bottom now that is actually flat and now we're gonna take a look at the C car which comes after the B so here you go this is one of the intermediate cars so it's slightly different we have black triangles here on the ends as well as the Southern Pacific speed lettering logo it's more centered rather than offset and this is what it looks like from the other side now on the ends again we have this peg I just noticed these cars actually have this tiny little loop here on the ends. And on this side we have the hoop just to put in the pins. Here's what it looks like on the bottom. While on top we have this tiny little detail. I have no idea what that is so let me know in the comments if you do because I would love to learn. Alright so the way you connect these cars together it's really simple. You just put the hole inside the pin. It's not really rocket science. So here you can see the difference between all three intermodal cars that I have. In the front we have the Cato Maxi 4. In the middle we have our Athern Maxi 3 and the back is a Walther's Thrall rebuilt. And they all have different sizes so Maxi 3 are 48, Maxi 4s are 53, and the Thralls are 40 foot. Now some differences between Kado and Athern is the hand railings. For the stanchions they are thinner on Kado, thicker on Athern so it's more durable but less realistic. The lattice systems are also different. The air brake system detailing is different as well as the catwalks. Kados actually go on one side while Athern goes on both sides and they're skinny. And one thing I've noticed, all three of these well cars, their catwalks are not see-through. They always have that plate behind it. So first off, we have MSC, Mediterranean Shipping Company. On the end with the doors, we got some separately applied handles, as well as some information about the container, as well as a little MSC logo. For the side profile, we got the big MSC logo in the middle, along with some more writing here, as well as 45 foot, because it is a 45 foot container. And here's what it looks like on the other side. So it's pretty much symmetrical and the bottom. So now let's compare it to the 20 foot MSC container. Now this is actually a little bit shorter than the 45 foot for some reason. And there is a different variation of color. This one one's more of a dark ochre while this one more like a sandy one. And on the roof there's also some serial numbers on the ends for the 20 foot. And here's a closer view of it. Now I think it is pretty cool to have some variations. I th honestly thought this would just be like half the size and that's pretty much it but there are some unique features. Now I've got another 20 foot container to go along with it. Right here is the Triton. It comes in a brownish reddish livery so that is pretty cool. 
And here's what it looks like from all angles. And this is actually good. So it goes with my other 20 foot. So you can put them in the bottom of the well car together. Now next up we have the NYK Logistics and Mega Carrier. So here's what it looks like on the ends. A lot of nice detailing. Well on the other side, that's what it looks like. Since I have two sides, I could show them both at the same time. And on the bottom we have Nippon Yusen Kaisha. That just means Japanese mail shipping company. And we got 45 written on the side just to show it's a 45 foot container, which is actually a bit longer than the average, which is 40 foot. And fun fact, NYK is actually one of the three companies to merge to form One Ocean Network Express, which has those really iconic magenta containers, but I don't have that in this video. Anyways, next up, we're going to take a look at the China shipping 45 foot container here on the ends. This is what it looks like. We got the usual info as well as that little logo there. On the left hand side, we got some Chinese text. I imagine it says something about China shipping. Now China shipping, they actually merged with Costco to form Costco shipping, but their containers might still exist. And now we have Evergreen. This is the company that was famous for blocking the Suez Canal last year. Now I already have a 40 foot Evergreen container, so I thought it would be cool to compare the two. So the one on the bottom is from Walters, while the one on the top is just a random eBay seller from China. So you can see there's quite a big difference between the logo design. I feel like Walters, they did a better job, although it's not 100% perfect, but who knows, maybe there's different variations in Evergreen logos in their past. Now on the doors, the logos are placed differently. The eBay wins on the side while the Walters behind the handle. I feel like this one goes to the eBay one because I see it more commonly in photos. And here's what it looks like on the other end, as well as this side. Now Walters has a slightly longer hole, so this is to accommodate for their tab peg system, which is actually wide. Uh, you can see the difference between the two, round versus elongated. So what this means is I could put the eBay container easily on the Walters, but I can't really do it the other way around because it just would not fit. So there's not actually any MMRA standards about this, so each company, they could do it their own way, but that leads to problems like this where you can't really have every container working perfectly with each other. Now our last container is the CMA CGM. Now now, I didn't know about this, but apparently they are a French company and they're the third largest shipping company in the world after MSC and Maersk. So I lied, these are actually the last shipping containers we'll be taking a look at and they come from Aurora Miniature and here we have the Maersk logo, it's really big. They actually are the largest shipping company in the world headquartered in Denmark. We got some serial number there and a 45 just to mark it as a 45 foot container as well as the same thing on the other side. And here's what it looks like on the end and the other side, as well as the bottom. We have this nice AuroraMiniature.com. Text ends and bottom corrugating. Now the reason why I want to get Aurora Miniature is because their containers can actually open so they're functional. This is not a normal feature on containers. I believe they're the first company to really do this, at least in HO scale. Now 99% of the time, I think you won't really need this feature at all, especially if you're running a regular train but I think maybe if you want to replicate like those people who are stealing cargo off those trains in the news recently that's what comes to mind or maybe you're loading it at a warehouse or something like that and the doors do snap when you close them so you don't have to worry about them randomly opening up while you're operating the train as for the interior, you can see there's a bit of treading on the floor. And sorry, I didn't really have my flashlight with me, but there you can see sort of in the back. Now again, with the pin and hole system, the Aurora Miniatures, this is what they're using. I actually don't know how exactly this works. I know it came with a bag with some plastic, but I wish there were some instructions or pictures on how it's supposed to operate, because I don't want to cut something off by accident.
So for my final thoughts, I think the Atherin Gunderson Maxi 3 48 foot well cars are really nice to have. They run pretty smooth, just as good or even better than the Kado Maxi 4s because I think they are lighter. The only real issue that I came across was that the train would sometimes uncouple from the locomotive and that's because the coupler heights are a bit too high. Now in the model railroading world, 48 foot well cars are common but in real life they are actually hard to see. If you watch like any rail fanning video, you probably will not see a 48 a foot well car it's mostly just 40 and 53 for domestic so this is something that would be more common to see in the past maybe like the 90s or something but i saw this on ebay for a pretty good price for a new one although i think it is four or five years old and they don't have any new releases for the maxi ones which are 40 foot i also do like the color scheme of all red it's a nice and vibrant color as well as the speed lettering logo looks really nice as for the containers i got mostly 45 foot so i didn't want to get 48 because that's super uncommon but i think the Walters containers are pretty good. They have a nice selection and they're really well detailed with separately applied handlebars. They also do have some weight to it so it kind of feels like wooden blocks. As for the Aurora miniature containers, I think they are pretty cool that they're having this idea of opening doors. I do like that a lot. They are pretty well detailed and I left the easter egg of one of the doors being open while running the train so if you actually spot that, congratulations. They only sell them at a few retailers so I just got mine from Lombard Hobby. The Walters containers come from Midwest Model Railroad and and the Athernwell cars come from eBay. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the video. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think, your experiences with these intermodal well cars. Subscribe if you want to be notified of future videos. And anyways, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.